true. Oh, not anymore, apparently. Apparently it just... Oh, now it's just live. Yeah. No, I don't mind cutting it, so... Okay, I'm going to go in seven, okay. six, five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our third installment of Insecurity. Once again, my name is Haim Cohen, and we're joined by Tom Webster, and he, we're here to discuss NSA, NSA security. This is our first part of more than a lot. We won't put a topic, a number on it because, obviously, we can go on and on and on, but we have a short show. So, Tom, how's it going? Oh, you know, leaky. That doesn't sound like a good week. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I'm, yeah, no. No, more bad news. Is there any good news, anything at all? Um, I heard that Lo the founder of LavaBit and the guys behind Silent Circle have decided to join forces and create a secure messaging platform. Uh, potentially a secure email platform, so we'll have to see what happens there. Well, I look no, no, I look forward to that. But no other like real good news. I mean, do we save a kitty from a tree today? Or uh, did the NSA capture a terrorist? Uh, uh, I'm sure they did. I'm sure somewhere, some NSA analyst that was threatening to do goodwill towards the people of America was bagged and tagged, just like the rest of them. Okay. God well, save what's the our first topic today? Uh, I think the first thing we should lead off with, and honestly probably the thing with the uh, the biggest reach and the biggest impact to the country as a whole, is everyone hates the USA. Um, and more so than usual, incredibly enough. Um, so it came out recently. Um, we did hear uh, a while, even before this show, we heard, hey, guess what? We've been spying on Brazil and on their companies and corporate interests and all of their, you know, big political leaders tapping their phones, listening to their stuff. Who cares? It's Brazil, right? It's not like they're an ally or anything. And honestly, Latin America's had it out for us, so it's not a huge deal. I mean, at least France, Spain, and Germany are still friendly, right? Right? No. Well, they were, no. <laughs> not anymore. Um, well, here is the question. So we get all these stories about how they're tapping into foreign foreign offices. Did, didn't I mean? Don't we know this? This is the this is my question the entire time. Every topic I'm going to say. Don't we? Didn't we expect this? I mean, is why is this so shocking that all of a sudden now we? Know, I guess the fact that we know makes it worse. Right. It's the the best way I've heard it explained, and it was. It's been this way since the first Prism leaks. Um, this is the difference between, yo, dude, I think someone's spying on us. Yeah, yeah, I totally think someone's spying on us. And and then it's, dude, that guy over there, he's spying on us. So it's it's definitely a more creepy feeling. It's It's more of a... Yeah, he might not be. I mean, he's got binoculars, but maybe he's just bird watching or looking out for our safety or protecting us from terrorists. It's it's different when you know what they're doing. Well, I mean, we do have video cameras everywhere. I mean, isn't that people people I guess came to the realization. I asked people at school, of course they're spying on us. What's new? The fact that they're telling us? They've been spying us since the 60s. I mean, I hear stuff like this, and I go to them. I say, look, that's okay that they're doing it without telling us, but now that we know that they're lying to us about this, that makes it so much worse. Yeah, it's it's really the fact that uh, in the eyes of the world leaders, I mean, sure, all countries spy on each other, right? That's that's not news. Um but it's different when we take satellite pictures and say, hey, it looks like uh, Cuba's got some missiles set up. Um, and, yeah, so, um, excuse me, uh, Mr. High French Officer, um, how was dinner last night? Because I know you were really excited about the pot roast your wife was cooking, and I, I know the tomatoes are kind of weird in a pot roast, but, I mean, you said that they should be good. 
How how exactly was that? Oh, and how are the kids? I heard little Joey got a B on a spelling test. Congratulations. Have him study a little bit more. Uh, it's it's the extent of it. Instead of us taking satellite pictures or watching other people's armies or even, you know, getting plans for a new tank, it's we're listening into the phone calls of literally everyone. Everyone all over the world. We we don't have a right to do this. And there are allies. It's not like we're listening in to North Korea's phone calls. If that came out tomorrow, that, oh my god, King John il we've been spying on him uh, until he died. We've been listening to every single phone call and every single email he ever sent. No one would care. But hell, France was ready to go to war with Syria. You know, just right by our side, because they're our buddies. And they've always been our buddies. France has been one of the biggest allies of the United States ever. Um, yeah, remember that uh, American Revolution thing? They had a big part in that. So why we would treat them like we treat North Korea or we treat Vietnam or we treat the USSR kind of irks some people. America's not friendly, and we probably shouldn't expect that. Well, well let's, let's, let's play a little devil's advocate. Let's hope that the spying that's going on is actually better or less, or I don't know the right word, than what they're actually spying on over in our non-allied countries. Well, we, we could hope, right? Um, but yeah, it, honestly, it looks like, and I, I wish I knew how they were doing this, but they have got telcos all over the world. They own, they have owned telcos all over the world. And I don't know if they're paying people off. I don't know if we've compromised, you know, fiber switches or PBX systems or what's going on. But rest assured, if you use a telephone anywhere in the world, we're listening. So we we can hope that the NSA is doing a little better with, you know, the countries we're not directly allied with. But at this moment... You know, Brazil is pissed. They they canceled a uh, a meeting with the president because they were pissed. France. Do we know why? Do we know specifically why, or that it's all the exact same thing? And we'll get to it in a second. There there were economic concerns with Brazil uh, as far as competing companies go for, you know, natural fuel. So yeah, you could sort of see that France. No idea why we would spy on France, Germany. Not really sure. Um, they seem to have a, you know, a little bit of swing in the international community, but nothing major. Spain? Why the hell would we spy on Spain? I, I don't get it. But So Spain was pissed. France went off. They said, okay, immediately we need a meeting now, today, not next week, not in an hour after you get your notes right, just right fucking now. Um, so they are not happy with us. The entire world, the, uh, basically all of Europe is coming together and saying, okay, we have to do something about America. And I don't think it'll be bombs. Honestly, what I think it'll do is I think it'll be economic. I think it'll be either trade sanctions or, worse, they'll hit us where it hurts. It'll be a European Silicon Valley. And they'll take away the only thing in this country, the only economic thing that's actually got some push to it right now, which is tech. Well... He, like we also heard, and I want to add to this, Bolivia is not on our list. But didn't they thought that Edward Snowden was on the Bolivian uh, prime minister's plane? They diverted that. So, and I don't know how the. I guess the U.S. says you're going to land now. I, I mm -hmm. think that that was the. You're. It's not. Can you please land now? It's you are going to land now, and then we're going to search your plane. And then I mean, you have all these things, all these people just. They want an answer, and then we hear the president say, I'm not aware, I was not aware of everything that's going on. And as and I feel like that's a cop-out. I feel like he did know. He may not know the extent of it, but instead of coming out and saying, look, I didn't know, but I will find out, and we will look at this, it was, I don't know, but terrorism, 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 9-11, terrorism, terrorism. Right. And that's the and, and excuse. We, yeah. And and look, we, we had that with the Patriot Act, and I was against the Patriot Act from when it started to say, we're going to give out national ID cards. Oh, so now when I'm walking, somebody can always ask for who I am rather than say, hey, I'm in public. Uh, if you're going to arrest me, then arrest me, but I don't need to be stopped and frisked. I don't need to prove myself to you. 
and then now we're here, and we just hear about this. We hear that they're doing this and we're doing that. Why do we need to uh, tap the, Jan uh, the German Chancellor's uh, uh, phone calls? I mean, what are we trying to get? And the one thing, and I'm going to ask you this, is how come China and Russia are either not on this list or not angry? Um, so, so China... China has stated, and they've stated a lot, and originally we blew this off, right? Because everyone knows China has state-sponsored hacking going on to get secret technologies from American companies, to get trade secrets, to get all the information they can so they can build their own industries and copy the U.S.'s innovation. Everyone knows that's going on. That's not a secret. It's very well known and very well documented. And China keeps saying, no, 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 no. As a matter of fact, the United States has been stealing our technology as well. And we blow them off. We're like, yeah, uh-huh, sure. I'm sure we are. What would we steal from you? But, you know, it's really looking more likely. With, with all the news that's come out, it's really looking more likely. Um, and we're, honestly, we, at least the NSA does not respect the sovereignty of other nations. I don't think this country respects the sovereignty of other nations. To be able to force down a presidential plane that had clear airspace, clear right-of-way, wasn't breaking any law at all, to force that plane down and then search it? Really? That's what we're coming down to? We can't play world police. We are not in that position. And honestly, Russia has started standing up. It's... Uh, tensions have, have never been this bad with, or uh, it, relations with Russia have never been this bad since the end of the Cold War. They're basically standing up and you know pushing back because they're the only country with enough power and enough umph to do it. Well, let's start off with yeah. So we have all these world leaders now saying, "What's going on?" and and they're looking for an answer. And the problem is, I don't think anybody knows the answer. There's the head of the NSA that knows the answer, but I don't think the foreign uh, intel the intelligence committee, the congressional intelligence committee knows the answer. I don't think the foreign committee knows the answer. Congress definitely doesn't know the answer. Yeah, we can be rest assured that no one outside of upper NSA. I, I I have a feeling I have a feeling that that somebody is saying some saying the right keywords. They're saying, you know what? Uh, we're going after, like I said, terrorism. We're trying to do this, but we're not looking at everybody. We're only looking at the bad guys. And when you say it that way, it sounds nice. I think my computer is starting to die. I'm not sure why. Well, I'm still alive, but. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is. Can you hear me, Tom? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. okay. It looks so, like I'm good. Okay, so I'll cut this out. But it's basically, I think that when they hear Congress talking, they're, Congress is getting the line that this is only good, and they're not looking at the bad. And you know what? When you ask, when you when you spin it in a way that most people want to hear, we're going after the bad guys. You have nothing to worry about. People are saying, well, it's only the bad guys. I'm not doing anything bad. And we go back to, you can't, I don't hide things from people. And that's, and, more, and that's the key. More importantly than that, so going back to your comment about the national ID card, we've seen this behavior before. We've exactly seen this behavior before. We've seen the your papers please, you know, in the 1940s in Germany. We've seen the oh, if you if you're hiding, you must be a fascist, you must be a trade unionist. I mean, you know, well, I'm I'm not a fascist or a trade unionist. I'm I'm not a communist. I'm I'm not I'm not Jewish. No, but uh, they'll go down the list, and eventually the chopping block will get to you. I, there's, and there's that's that. what we have to worry about. Yeah, it's it's not about catching terrorists. It was never about catching terrorists. That was just the convenient excuse of the time. Honestly, when you look at it. Take a look at McCarthyism and take a look at terrorism and play back news stories, play back newspapers, take all the media around fighting communists and apply it to the terrorists of today. Terrorism is our new McCarthyism, and it is just as dangerous. We also have the other problem. The terrorists and the security experts, they know how to hide. 
It's just like you're going after you're going after the drug dealers that have burner phones. I have my I have my smartphone that I keep for two years with the number that I've had for for over a decade. You're going after me. You have to be worried about. You have to track these things, and that's hard. And so when they're saying they're going after, they're getting everything. You know, basically they're going to store it so they can parse it later. But later is now indefinite, and it's going to be hard for them. And encryption is getting better. And remember, they're going. They're not going after the smart people. That's the problem. The smart people are smart and will get around it. Yeah. And that's what really gets me. So let's ask this question. So we have an article today from the Washington Post. You want to go into it? Um, yeah, yeah. So the Washington Post basically, and we, uh, Steve Gibson actually, not we, uh, Steve Gibson had a hunch that this was it, and he talked about it on Security Now, uh, how the NSA was doing bulk data collection for Google, Yahoo, and a bunch of these other services. Well, Google and Yahoo are named explicitly. But this slide basically shows, um, you know, when Google is talking to people, there's a layer of SSL in between. It gets to a front-end server, the data is encrypted with SSL, and it forwards on to people. Um, but the data center links in Google, where they actually synchronize data between Google servers, that is not encrypted, or at least was not encrypted. Um, uh, reportedly, two Google engineers, according to the Washington Post, started swearing incoherently when they saw the slide and saying, I hope you publish this. Um, and then they went on to say that Google is rapidly deploying SSL and rapidly deploying encryption between data centers to fight this. Um, so say that again. No, no, say that one more time. So Google is encrypting everything between bet on their end, right? It, so I'm looking at the slide. So they're encrypting everything on their end. They're encrypting everything where you are talking to Google. Now, when Google talks to Google through their data center, so let's say they have a data center in India and a data center in Chicago, and that's a popular place to put a data center. When they need to synchronize Gmail accounts, which happens all the time, all day long, when they need to synchronize Gmail, the, the pipe in between those two, the route they take through the Internet, that data is not encrypted. And the NSA is sitting in the middle of that pipe. Usually, you know, right on, if the data center is here, they're going to sit on the Internet service provider about here and put their taps in and collect that data in stream. But so didn't the, we what, know, I mean, didn't we know that? Didn't we know from end to end well, we that had it wasn't a, encrypted? We had a hunch from Steve Gibson that that's what they were doing. Uh, this is the confirmation. Steve Gibson was right. Well, okay, so what Steve Gibson said was, basically, uh, they were, and, and you're right on this, they're inserting themselves as a man in the middle. So they're just acting as from level three. They go to level three, they say, uh, where's Google servers? Just do me a favor, put this patch cable from us to, from you to us, and for, then from us to Google, and you won't see a slowdown and nothing will happen. And I guess, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what's going on in the short term. I mean, exactly. It's just basically someone saying, some security guy saying, hey, before you get into the bank, tell me the details, and I'll confirm it with your bank before we move on, and that person's just a, a crook getting right. your information. Exactly. So, so we, we, they find this out, and we, and yes, you're right, Steve Gibson's been saying this for months, and I think Google's, and Google's was vehemently, uh, they were saying, no, there's no way the government, we agreed to the government, and the government and Snowden are saying, yes, they did, and we, I was losing credibility with Google, because you have all these things mm -hmm. that say one way, and now we know how it is, so now, does Google, Google and Yahoo's credibility, as well as, well, we'll leave Microsoft out, go up? Um, I believe so. What it looks like on the surface, and again, we don't have confirmation on this, my guess is that Google, Microsoft, Skype, Yahoo, everyone involved in the first prism leak, every tech company that was involved, um, was accurate when they said, no, no, we don't know of anything called prism, but everything we give to the NSA or law enforcement is through legal channels. It's by court order, it's by warrant, it's by subpoena, it's by whatever proper legal channel exists that isn't a FISA order. It's, so I could totally see PRISM being, you know, just like Google said, the SFTP server where they upload data. Um, 
that could be entirely accurate. And this other program that's not called Prism is the one siphoning off the data in stream. So now, now I think what needs to happen is this slide needs to really go out and all these companies needs to go back with their initial press release and say, let's, let me explain this to you and let me explain to you what we said. So we, because we're not wrong here. If they have the information, it's by no means of our own. But the problem is, then is it level three's fault? You know, and I've, I've struggled with this question for a long time because... I build software, I own servers. What would I do if, uh, especially after seeing what happened to the Lavabit founder, um, you know, what would I do in that situation if I were coerced by a FISA letter to install a tap on my network box? Um, you know, with the promise that, hey, we're only going after terrorists, we're only going after people outside of this country, we're only going after people who want to cause the next 9-11. Yeah, what, what would you do? Oh, and by the way, and we're going to tell you this up front, if you don't comply, we will charge you a whole shit ton of money and shut down your business. I, I mean, what do you do at that point? Level 3 isn't exactly a small organization. They're an internet backbone. They are, you know, a tenth of the internet. They're a giant provider to everyone. What do you do in that situation? You either comply or you shut down everything for everyone. It's not just your job on the line. It's you and everyone's job on the line. But we don't know how... We knew how long this was going on for, and this was going on for years, and no <laughs> one at Level 3 knew this? I mean, the CEO... No I'm one, sure they did. No? I'm, I'm sure they did, but that letter says you will go to jail if you tell someone about this. I mean, I have a feeling it's it's probably you're probably going to have more punishment leaking the next iPhone than a government FISA letter. And no one, no one, no one like knew this. There was no whistleblower. There was no anybody that could have leaked something like dropped a note. Like this is like the best kept secret ever, and there had to be so many people that knew about it. Well, when you threaten someone with treason, when you threaten someone, you know, basically with the death penalty or life in prison, they tend to keep your secrets. Um, especially if you give them the promise of, hey, we're only using this to catch bad guys. And, you know, it's probably not everyone at level three, right? It's probably one or two network techs, or even in the case of at and in the case of the... Um, you know, the Verizon the AT&T whistleblowers that came out and said, hey, this is what happened. By the way, they got in trouble for this. Um, they said, yeah, we basically just gave them the keys to the network closet, and we had, you know, guys in black suits come in and hook up their own stuff. We don't know anything about it. It's the same thing. Yeah, it, it most likely is. It most likely is, you know, guys with guns and badges show up at Level 3's door and say, hey, we're going to drop some network equipment here in a locked room that only we have keys to. You have to do this or we're arresting everyone. Deal? Deal. It's Look, it's scary. Again, it's scary to think about. And now that we see more of this, and I feel like uh, today is not Thursday, so I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Jeez. But Thursday is, Thursday is leak day, so it's like the best part. Like 12 noon is like the best part of my day. Mm -hmm. um, now that the world leaders are seeing this, they have to they have to start saying, "What about us?" I mean, most most national companies, multinational companies, have servers in all these different countries. I don't know what what did did the the did the NSA go to Europe and do this? So it's not just is it Baidu in China? Is it uh, what's the the Facebook in uh, Orkut in Brazil? I mean. What else? Well, I don't think the NSA is tapping Orkut because, to my knowledge, no one uses Orkut. Only in Brazil, and they're <laughs> mad at us. <laughs> Probably. My bad. My bad. Sorry. I tried it. It was awful. Yeah. Um, well, and I mean, so, and I, like, I understand. So the NSA initially said when they were backpedaling that this was only for non-U.S. citizens. But I use Google, I use Docs, I use uh, Yahoo, I use Flickr, I do all of this. In fact, in 10 minutes, we're going live on the other show talking about all the Google stuff. They want our photos, and they're doing amazing things with photos. Now they have our photos. Does that go with them? Does Who knows? And that's and, the scary part. 
at this point, the only thing you can assume when you use the computer or the internet at all, when you're not doing encryption on your own system that you know and have verified is safe, and by the way, if you're using Windows at all, you have no idea. It is assumed to be compromised. So you, you can be just about guaranteed when you're using Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, any big service provider, every piece of data and everything you use is tapped, collected, stored, analyzed somewhere. And yet, it might not be stored forever. If they you know, analyze and say, eh, it's a picture of some dude's kid, we don't really care. He's not connected in eight different ways to whatever this guy is. You may not care, but you should. And that's what we go back to. We, we The point of this whole podcast was, and you did a great job explaining this, was to what can we do? I mean, we... We're, we're telling you what the, the issue is now. Now we have to go with uh, the shiny security that you discussed. We have to talk about setting up uh, email encryption, uh, maybe going back to maybe thinking other ways to communicate if you're trying to send passwords to people, just finding different ways that you can spread yourself that are simple enough that the average person can do it. Because the end goal is, if we can get a handful of people to use two-factor authentication, I think we, we're on the path to winning, sort of. Yeah. The the only er, the biggest issue with that is, um, and I, I gave a talk on this a while ago, security apps are easy. You know, the probably the easiest security app for any type of communication I can think of is CryptoCat, and that's had known documented flaws for the group chat. Um, but, I mean, you're talking about Pigeon with a custom plugin. They have to drop into a weird folder and set up keys and make sure you share the keys correctly and then keep a key file. Or in the case of PGP, you know, you have to generate a PGP key and make sure it's secure and you store it securely and use a secure passphrase and only have email locally on your system and then encrypt it and then send it. It's it's not easy to be secure right now. And, you know, that'll change in the future. This entire thing is giving birth to a giant, giant array of security applications, and we're about to see a giant boom. Uh, look, I, I want to praise Apple for their, uh, finger, uh, their Touch ID technology, and I read yesterday, for better or worse, that, that their, their cloud keychain is going to be... They said that it's not stored locally, but now we're hearing... Or not stored on their servers, but now we're hearing both sides of it. But if Apple can find a way, Apple's going to be the best chance of making this as shiny as possible. And maybe maybe they're going to find a way to do it that somebody can like really say, let's open source some similar idea to make it. Like We have LastPass, but no one wants to use it because, like you said, it doesn't look pretty. Whereas I cl the keychain is dead simple. It just works. If you're using Safari, you're using a Mac, and now you go to another Mac, it's just, it's just there. So yeah. the I'm hoping that Apple the... Apple is they, they've been known to build in you know, vulnerabilities or keys or other law enforcement tools directly into their devices. Yeah, and that was the problem. Like, they do have the keys to iMessage. And we don't, and they say they'll never use it, this and that, but the fact that they have the keys it now makes it useless to most, to anybody who cares. So, but... I, I want to praise them for being on the right path. They're not there yet, but it's better than, oh, here's everything in plain text, just go for it, and we'll see what happens. Right. It's better, but, you know, we're... The, the fact of the matter for all security applications and all security developers is this. We are not battling against coffee shop hackers anymore. We are not worried about the guy in the hoodie at Starbucks that's listening to metal and sitting there on his backtrack machine. That's not our enemy right now. Our enemy is a giant, statewide, well-funded organization that operates all over the world. We're playing a different ball game now. And and that's the sad part. So, again, we continue, we continue fighting the good fight and encrypting things. So we Encrypt want you to all the things, yeah. all all the bits. We want all the zeros and ones to be twos and threes. <laughs> okay, everyone, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Thanks for listening. 
We hope that you like the show. We're on Google Plus. Find us. Insecuritieshow.com will be up shortly. But right now your best bet is Google Plus. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Have a good night. Yep. See Bye. you guys.